Hello Year 4, I hope you're all doing well and welcome to another maths meeting. And in today's maths meeting we are going to be multiplying and dividing by 10, 100 and 1000. So for this lesson you will need a whiteboard and a whiteboard pen, a piece of paper, preferably square paper, a sharp pencil and a ruler. As always we're going to start off by practicing our times tables and in today's maths meeting we'll be practicing our sixes. So, as always, get your fists out ready, off we go. Team, team, good as gold, let me see your fingers roll the sixes. Yeah. Zero, six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty, thirty-six, forty-two, forty-eight, fifty-four, sixty. And Arc Victoria says, sixty-six, seventy-two. How do you do? How do you do? We can do our sevens too, okay? Fantastic. I hope that you've enjoyed that. Give yourself a spectacular. Your turn. Fantastic. Good. Oh, also, just as a quick reminder that you've got to uh, make sure that you have a go at the multiplication tables check on youarebrainy.com where there are quick fire multiplication questions. So, as a quick do now, I want you to have a look at these numbers. What do you notice about them? Okay, what do you notice about these numbers? Pause the video now. Good. So you probably notice that all of these numbers have a 12 in them. Okay, they have a 1 and a 2, but some of the numbers are maybe 10 times bigger or a hundred times bigger, or even a thousand times bigger, whilst other numbers are ten times smaller, a hundred times smaller, or even a thousand times smaller. That's what we're going to be looking at today. So, in today's lesson, we're going to be revisiting, multiplying, and dividing by ten, a hundred, and thousand. And the key word here is revisiting. So this is something that we already did at the beginning of this year, um, and we're just going to go over it. So, to start off, can you remember the method of solving a question like this? Okay, you would have seen a question like this, 124 times 100, in the arithmetic paper. Okay, pause the video and I want you to think about how would you go about mentioning that, or sorry, uh, solving this question. Good, now that you've thought about it, I want you to shout out your method uh, to your screen. Off you go, shout it out, nice and loud. Brilliant, okay, interesting, there's lots of different methods. Fantastic, good, well let's have a look. So the method that I'm going to be using in order to be able to answer this question is using my place value grid, okay? So I'm going to do 124 multiplied by 100. The first step is that I need to actually write down 124 on my place value grid. So I can either write the digits 1, 2, 4, or I can write use circles to represent the counters, okay? So for this example, I'm just going to use circles to represent the counters. So I've got one counter for 100 to represent uh, 100s in the 100s column. I have two tens and I've got four ones. Now the next step is that I want to look at my times, okay, at my operation. So multiplying, and I know that when I multiply two whole numbers together, the product or the answer is going to be bigger. It's either going to be the same or bigger. So what I mean by that, for example, if I was to do 3 times 1, 3 and 1, they're both whole numbers, they're not fractions. And if I was to do 3 times 1, the answer is 3. Now if I was to do 3 times 2, 3 and 2, they're relatively small numbers. Well, the product of that is 6. 6 is a bigger number than 3 and 2. Okay. And when you are multiplying, so you're, the number gets bigger. And what we notice when we look at our place value grid is that when you move to the left, each time that you move to the left, the value of the digits become 10 times bigger. Okay, the value of the digits become 10 times bigger. So I now know that my direction that I'm going to move all the digits is to the left. And the zero here, or the zeros I should say, tells me the number of jumps. So for each zero, that's one jump. Okay, because I'm multiplying by 100, I'm going to be jumping two times to the left. And I know this is my left, your left is that way. There we go. So two times to the left. Okay, so let's start off with the 100. So I'm going to move it two places to the left. That's one, two. I'm just going to draw my 
circle there, the tens, one, two, and finally the ones, one, two. So now I've got to read my new number. So I've got one, one, there's going to be a one in the ten thousands column. Let me actually write it down here. There's going to be three thousands. There are four hundreds. Okay. And now there are no tens and no ones. Okay. There are no tens and no ones. So my new number is going to become 13,400. Okay. So 124,000 is going to be 13,400. Well, oh, Mr. Ibrahim's made a mistake. What mistake have I made? Can somebody notice? Probably someone already identified. Absolutely, yeah. So when I moved the digits in the tens column, I accidentally drew an extra circle, okay, an extra counter. So actually, it's not, it wasn't three tens, it was two tens. So my aunt here is not going to be one uh, thirteen thousand four hundred is going to be twelve thousand four hundred. Okay, that's a common misconception that children do when they move the digits across. They might accidentally add an extra counter. Okay, like what I've done there. In addition to this, another common misconception that I've come across when I've taught this to children across the years is that they think that okay, if I was to do twelve times a thousand, the answer is twelve thousand is because I've just got to add three zeros. They look at the number of zeros. Uh, that they're multiplying by and they just add that onto the number that is incorrect you do not do that okay and i'm going to show you why you don't do that in a moment okay you've got to move the digits in your place value grid when you become really confident at doing this on a piece of paper you won't have to then uh write down and you won't have to use a place value grid. you can just visualize one in your head and you can visualize moving the numbers or the circles uh, all the digits uh, across okay so let's have a look at this one this time i'm now going to be dividing so once again i'm going to this time instead of drawing circles i'm going to just write down the number so i've got uh 124 and this time i'm now going to be dividing so if times i'm making the number bigger when you're dividing you're making the number smaller so therefore the direction in which we're going to be moving the digits is to the right sorry this way okay and i'm also going to be moving it two places the number of zeros is telling me that i'm going to move it two places however i've come to a problem because my place value grid ends in ones so now i've got to go small I'm, I'm now moving to the right okay i'm now moving to the right but i'm going smaller so what's smaller than one so after my ones i've got my decimal point which is really important and then i have my tenths and hundreds okay so it's important that you draw that in your place value grid okay so i've got my tens and hundreds and it's so so important we're going to come back to that decimal point in a moment okay so starting off with the ones i'm going to move that four two places one two to the left so the four is going to go here in the, in the hundreds column the two one two is going to go into the tens column and finally the one one two is going to go into the ones column Good, my answer now is 124. Is that right? Give me a thumbs up if it's right or thumbs down if it's wrong. Go. Well done, I can see that most of you have put your thumbs down. The value of that is not 124, and that's another misconception because how can it be 124 divided by 100 is just 124? That's wrong. What the person or what I have forgotten to do is I've forgotten to put my decimal point in. So my decimal point in needs to go over here. So it's 1.24, okay? 124 is a lot different to 1.24, cool? Also, I'd like to now uh, uh, just make you aware of this website. It's called didax.com and I'm going to put the link of this um, website into the description box into YouTube so you can directly access it. And what you can do, because you know um, when you're answering the questions for the U, uh, if you don't have a place value grid, you can use an online version of it. Okay, and you've got the counters here on the right hand side, the different values of the different counters here to help you. Okay, however, some of you are feel more comfortable just drawing your own place value grid, that's absolutely fine. But I just thought I'd make you aware of this fantastic resource. So let's now have a go at this question together. Okay, 1.3 times 100 and 13 divided by 100. 
So 1.3 times 100. What's my first step? What do I need to do with that 1.3? Tell me, nice and loud, shout it out. Good. I need to write it onto my place value grid. Well, I can see here that I've got a 1, but then I don't have my 0.3, my tenth. So I need to now add that into my place value grid. So I'm just going to extend my place value grid a little bit. I'm now going to add the tenths and the hundredths. So I've got my 0.3. Now I'm multiplying by 100. If I'm multiplying, is the number going to become bigger or smaller? Shout it out. Bigger, absolutely. And what direction am I going to move? Am I going to move to the right or to the left? Tell me louder, please. Nope, not left. It's right. I'm going to be moving the digits to the right. Oh, am I actually going to be moving to the right? So I'm just putting you like they're actually moving them to the left. OK, I'm just getting confused with the, the camera, but I'm moving them to the left. OK, so I'm moving these digits to the left. How many jumps? Well, I have to have a look at 100. 100 has two zeros, so I'm going to jump twice. So the one is going to go one, two into the hundreds column. The three, one, two, three. So my answer now is 103. OK, or no, what's what's the value of that three in that column? Three tens. Absolutely. So I've got one hundred three tens. How many ones have I got? Well, I've got nothing there. It's empty. So it's important that you put a zero for a placeholder. OK, so I'm going to put my placeholder here. That's one hundred and thirty. I'm now going to do the same thing now this time, but um, for 13 divided by 100. I'm using now slightly a different color. So as you've already mentioned to me, the first step is that I need to write 13. So I've got 1, 3, 1, 10 and 3 ones. And I'm dividing by 100. So the number is going to become smaller. So that means I need to move the digits to the right. Absolutely. OK. OK. And I'm going to be jumping. So I'm moving the digits to the right and I'm going to do two jumps. OK, because there are two zeros. So I'm going to start off with a three. That's one, two, three is going to go there and uh, in three hundredths. And the value of the tens, one ten is going to go one, two here in the tens column. OK, and I now need to remember that my answer is not just 13. It's actually point 13 and it's not just point 13. You can't say point 13. You actually need to have some sort of digit, at least in your ones column. So we're going to do write a zero here from our placeholder like we did with 130 we need to write zero in our placeholder so my answer is going to be 0 0.13 okay 0 0.13 fantastic i would like for you now to have a go at these six questions and the challenge questions on your whiteboards or piece of paper but firstly, I'd like you to pause these quests, this video whilst you have a go at the questions and make sure that you press play again so that you can go through the answers. Good luck. Now let's go through the answers. So 23 times 100 is 2,300. 4 divided by 10 is 0 .0, uh, 0 0.4. 17 times 1,000 is 17,000. 0.12 times 100 is 12. 409 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.409, and 2,301 divided by 10 is 230.1. And for the challenge question, Lucy, she is wrong because she just added two zeros. When you move the digit to the left, the answer will be 220. So 2.2 .2 times 100 is 220. Lovely. Make sure that you give yourself a tick or a cross and any questions that you got wrong, just have another go at them again. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I look forward uh, to seeing you again very soon. Bye.